Hi everybody, this is uh, lesson six of solar energy application. Uh, we are still in the uh, solar radiation part. This is part five of solar radiation. As discussed before, the textbook for uh, this course is uh, mainly solar engineering of thermal process. Other references will be used uh, whenever required and uh, you may follow them by the link which is given at the bottom of each page. In the previous five sessions we discussed about sun air geometry, extraterrestrial radiation in summary. Uh, and we learn how to find the extraterrestrial irradiance irradiation on a horizontal surface at any location. By extraterrestrial we mean the radiation outside the atmosphere or on the earth neglecting the atmospheric effect. And you may remember that irradiance and irradiation are two terms. Irradiance refers to the power, uh, radiation power, which where the unit is watt per square meter, and irradiation is the energy where the unit is joule per square meter. Uh, so we learned uh, to find the extraterrestrial radiation uh, on a horizontal surface at any location. And today and in the next lessons, we will see how to calculate terrestrial. Terrestrial means on the Earth or uh, considering the effect of atmosphere radiation on a horizontal surface. And uh, maybe in lesson uh, eight, uh, we will learn how to find the radiation on a tilted surface at any orientation and a slope. But uh, what, are going, what are we doing? Today, today we will learn about spectral distribution of extraterrestrial radiation. It means uh, what is the wavelength uh, for each uh, for each part of the extraterrestrial radiation, atmospheric attenuation or effect of atmosphere on solar radiation. What are the solar data resources? It means that how we can find data about solar radiation for any location. And uh, we will uh, start a short topic on solar radiation modeling. It will be continued in the next lesson. This is the light spectrum. And as you can see, it is from uh, X-ray up to the radio wave. And uh, you can see that about 99% of the solar power reaching the Earth's surface has a wavelength between 300 and 2500 nanometer, uh, which covers the area from here to here and include ultraviolet, visible light, and infrared. Uh, there are also 1% of the other rays, but the main part of the solar spectrum, as you can see in this picture, is comprised of UV, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. Uh, actually, UV or ultraviolet photons, which them, them by themselves can be divided into A, B, and C, are responsible for giving us sunburns, as you may experience before. Visible photons allow us to see objects and infrared photons here make us feel warm. So this is the sun spectrum or main part of the sun spectrum which includes ultraviolet, visible, infrared. As we go to the right as you can see the wavelength is increased. There is a spectral distribution of extraterrestrial radiation, which is very important. As you can see on top, even though the total irradiance intensity of radiation may be the same, for example, it's been two locations, there may be two locations with a total amount of irradiance uh, equal to 1000 baht per square meter. But as there are a different range of wavelengths as, the, as their distribution, uh, it is also important to analyze uh, the spectrum of uh, solar radiation. As you can see, depending on the wavelength, uh, you can see that the spectral irradiance is completely different. Uh, this is a picture from your textbook. I changed somewhere actually because there are two mistakes. You should correct them if you have the printed textbook. 
uh, here the wavelength in the horizontal axis should be nanometer and here on the vertical axis the extraterrestrial irradiance uh, unit should be watt per square meter per nanometer not micrometer as you can see and explained in the previous slides the range starts from ultraviolet with uh, the wavelength less than 0.38 micrometer or 380 nanometer the visible range with a wavelength of 380 up to 780 nanometer and um, to the right you have the infrared spectrum with the wavelength of more than 780 uh, nanometer okay the vertical axis here in this picture shows a spectral intensity please note that there's a difference between a spectral intensity and intensity intensity as you can see here mo measures power per unit area for example watt per square meter while a spectral intensity measures power per unit area per unit wavelength okay so the unit is watt per square meter per micrometer or nanometer no difference actually the distinction is important when we want to calculate the power content within a certain band of wavelength okay for example for the power content into in the visible spectrum for example between 3 8 up to 7 8 uh, then it is important to consider the unit because we are going to uh, if you are going to calculate the power content within a certain range for example from here to here then the unit is important because you are actually calculating the area below the curve the total power in a certain spectral range how it can be calculated it can be calculated by integrating the intensities over that range for example from here to here from here to the right or the a simple way of estimating the energy content in different parts of the solar spectrum is to compare the area of those parts of the spectrum so by comparing the for example area below the curve in the ultraviolet visible and infrared you can simply understand or see uh, what which uh, which actually which of these three parts has the main uh, share in the solar energy uh, the if the, the the slide uh, the previous slide or picture or graph also can be shown in tabulated form it is from your textbook table 13a and you can see here again the extraterrestrial solar radiance in increments of wavelength here the t actually these two three columns are the same in continuation of one another i just put here part of the table you can refer to the textbook for the complete table for example you uh, you have the uh, the wavelength here you see the 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 uh, the spectrum actual solar uh, and here you can see the integration of the area or actually the part of uh, the share of energy from zero to that one to, uh, for example if you want to know what's the share of the wavelength below 0.38 which is the ultraviolet length you can come here and you can see that six percent of the uh, the whole uh, solar spectrum belongs to the ultraviolet range so these uh, two actually can be compared together if you use the graph for example and want to see what is the extraterrestrial irradiance at this wavelength for example here you simply go up from 1500 and then to the left and if you want to do the same by the table go to the one 500 and here you can see the the exact value of g and also the share of uh, the energy in the spectrum up to this point there's an example in your textbook example 131 uh, and it asks uh, the you to calculate the fraction of the extraterrestrial solar radiation in each uh, part actually ultraviolet visible and infrared in the same way as I explained before, you can simply calculate it and the result is here. 
you can see that the fraction of the ultraviolet is 0.064 or in a more simple way it is 6.54 percent the share of the visible light is 48.3 percent and 45.3 percent belong to the infrared please note that this is the spectral distribution or share or fraction of the extraterrestrial radiation when the sun rays pass the atmosphere there will be some difference uh, in between uh, in order to simulate the sun spectrum actually uh, we take it similar to a black body the spectrum of sunlight reaching the top of the earth atmosphere is pretty close to that of the perfect black body you know that the black body spectrum uh, based on physics law is dependent on its temperature and in definition a black body is an object that absorbs all incident radiation and emits the maximum amount of thermal radiation that any object can emit for that specific temperature. Objects at very high temperature tend to act like black body. And I, you can see here, this is the previous picture, this one. And you can see that this is similar to the black body spectrum at the specified temperature. When the sun passes, the sun rays passes the atmosphere, actually there are some changes or attenuation of solar radiation as you can see here in the left and the right there is scattering and there is absorption absorption on the right is from clothes aerosol ozone and water vapor and scattering is through clothes and aerosols both of these mechanisms produce diffuse irradiation as you can see here and what we receive on the earth is actually a combination of all these I put them here in a short form. As you can see here, variation in solar radiation from top of atmosphere to the Earth's surface includes change in the extraterrestrial radiation as noted in chapter 1. You may remember that due to the distance between the Sun and the Earth, there is the variation in the extraterrestrial radiation between Sun and the Earth. We uh, I showed you how to calculate it uh, based on the distance between the sun and the earth. The second is atmospheric scattering by the air molecules, water and dust. And the third is atmospheric absorption by O3, ozone, water vapor and CO2, carbon dioxide. And, and finally, as you can see here, what we have on the earth is the blue curve, which is the radiation at sea level. Now you can see that there's a difference between what we receive on top of the atmosphere and what we receive on the Earth. The change is dependent on the type of molecules uh, which are existing in the atmosphere. For example, you can see here that the difference between the, uh, the sun irradiance uh, in the ultraviolet range between top of atmosphere which is the yellow curve here you can see sunlight without atmospheric absorption actually it is above the atmosphere or at the edge of the atmosphere top edge of the atmosphere and the red one here as you can see is the sunlight at sea level the difference as you can see here is mainly because of ozone uh, molecules in the atmosphere so the main effect of ozone is on the ultraviolet ultraviolet spectrum and you can see that it will affect you may hear that in parts of the world that ozone uh, layer has been depleted uh, there's a there's a risk of, uh, of ultraviolet uh, cancer or all other effects on the human skin uh, here you can see that the main effect of O2 is, for example, part here. The main effect of H2O or water vapor is different. In different wavelengths, it can affect the spectrum. And, for example, CO2 can affect here. In summary, what we receive on the Earth actually is the red one. And you can see that it is different. This is the final shape of the spectral irradiance received on the Earth. And in summary, we can say finally that 
about four, four percent of the solar energy reaching the Earth's surface is in the ultraviolet spectrum. You may remember that what we receive on top of the atmosphere is different. It is, it, the difference is not small. It is not so much, but totally they are different. So, four percent of the energy here is in the ultraviolet range. About forty-four percent is in the visible range here, and about fifty-two percent is in the infrared spectrum. We will learn later that this this is very important because uh, actually our role in solar energy design systems. Uh, either the solar panel, photovoltaic module, or solar thermal collector is to is to capture the most of this energy which is reaching the earth. Does any device like a solar module, for example, um, uh, 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 absorb all the wavelengths from here to here? It depends actually on the type of solar module or uh, or some physical characteristic of the receiving surface, which we'll discuss later in this course. Okay, the next topic of today, of course, is solar radiation data. Uh, actually, when you are going to design a solar energy system, the first thing you need is solar radiation data for that location. The question is how we can, um, we can find the data. Uh, before going to the resources, uh, please note that solar radiation data are available in several forms and you should be aware of different forms which the re solar radiation data may be produced or distributed. Uh, you can read here later, but in summary, it, they may be in uh, terms of irradiance or irradiation. You may remember that irradiance is watt per square meter and irradiation is joule per square meter. They may be hourly, daily or monthly data. Actually, monthly data are the average of daily and daily is the average of hourly. But finally, you should check how, 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 in which format the data are given. Time or time period of the measurement, for example, to which uh, to which time the measurements belong. For example, do they belong, for example, to 20 years back or they are recent or the same. Check whether the data are beam diffuse or total radiation. These are completely different and we discussed a lot about them before. We, what are instruments used to measure the solar radiation if they are measured data? Because as you can see, the data may be modeled data. And uh, what is the receiving surface orientation for I for which the data is given? Does the data are uh, given, for example, in on a horizontal surface or a sloped surface? If the surface is sloped, what is the angle of the slope? So these are the important uh, things you should be aware of them when you are using a solar radiation data. How does solar radiation data are produced? There are actually three main types. There are more, but these are the three main types of uh, gathering solar, solar data. <clears throat> the first is ground measurement. By ground measurement, we mean the devices like the one you can see here, put on the ground, either horizontal or at an angle to measure the solar radiation on the surface. There are advantages for ground measurement, as you can see here in the left. The high frequency measurement, it depends on you and on the system or device, it may be second to minutes. Higher accuracy, if properly managed and controlled, this is very important because if they are not properly managed and controlled, then you have, uh, you will not have higher accuracy, okay? What are the limitations? The sensor accuracy, because for example, you can see here a sensor, here a sensor, and here the accuracy of this sensor all differs and you may be aware of them need for uh, regular maintenance and calibration because for example that they should be maintained cleaning the dots or their debris or some things like this and at a certain periods it may be one year or two years or three years maximum the devices should be recalibrated recalibrated means that uh, you should check the data with a reference device uh, to see how, if they are correct or not. 
data cleaning and management by cleaning here it does not mean cleaning physical cleaning it is actually the uh, the soft cleaning it means that the data should be clean for example a bird may sit at a moment on the sensor at that moment the data will be the, the output will be maybe zero but this is not real because a bird is sitting on the sensor or uh, uh, something like this a high cost of acquisition generally the cost of acquisition of data is high and operation and motivated personnel motivated personnel uh, means that people should be uh, aware that this for example should be clean recalibrated and the other uh, the second uh, solar data resource is satellite data which is uh, very important actually there are a lot of satellites which measure solar radiation data the most important ones are METOSAT uh, series of, um, of satellites. Um, this, for example, is a field view of METOSAT Prime in red and METOSAT S East in orange. You can see that they continuously monitor the solar radiation on Earth. Uh, there are advantages for satellite measurements. They are available everywhere, continuous coverage, special resolution. Actually, it depends on the location. In Europe, it is 5 by 4 kilometer. Uh, it may be different in other parts of the world. Frequency of measurements is 15 minutes, which is good. And uh, there are other advantages, as you can see here. The, one of the most important is they are available for up to 20 years back and uh, the limitations are that lower instantaneous accuracy for the point estimate when compared to the high quality ground measurement high quality is underlined here because if the measurement is not high quality uh, then you cannot rely on the ground measurement okay if the ground measurement has a high quality then it will be preferred actually to the satellite data because they are real and the third uh, is radiation models. Uh, by radiation models, we mean, I mean mathematical models which are used to model the solar radiation. We will discuss about different models later because this is an important topic, especially for the locations where ground or satellite data are not available or um, uh, missing for some years. Uh, from where you can uh, find the, the solar data, there are a lot of data sources. Some are free and some are commercial, which means that you should pay. These are just some free weather data resources. This is a partial list. There may be more. And here you can see some of commercial data pro products. Again, it is a partial list and there are more. By commercial, I mean that you should pay for them. Let's have a review on some of them. The first is solar data resource at NREL. NREL stands for National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, NREL has a database, radiation database, which is named NSRDB. It stands for National Solar Radiation Database. In the National Solar Radiation Database, with the link given here, at the bottom left, you can find the solar radiation data. The next very really important solar data resource is Solar GIS. Solar GIS, as you can see here, is a weather data and software for solar power investments. It is a very famous and well known solar data resource. The website is given here in the bottom. Uh, they have both free maps and also maps where you should pay and uh, which are more specific and maybe more accurate for the free maps they have uh, as you can see here solar data resource maps for more than 200 countries for example for iraq you can select middle east and then or maybe asia i don't remember and then you may select iraq uh, and you will have the solar radiation data for the country uh, if you pay for it you may receive more detailed data a sample of radiation and meteorological data for Almeria in Spain you can see here for example this is the month of the year in each month you have the different parameters you may remember that these we discussed before GHI stands for global horizontal irradiation DNI is the direct normal irradiance DIF is the diffuse horizontal irradiance and GTI is on the tilted 
Here you have GHI for each month in Almeria, DNI, diff, D2G, D2G means the ratio of the diffuse radiation to the global horizontal irradiation. You have the average temperature for the month, you have the average wind speed for the month, you have cooling degree days and heating degree days for this special month. So you may have specific, more specific data for the location. Uh, GIS actually uh, under a contract, uh, Solar GIS, sorry, Solar GIS under a contract with the World Bank prepared another data source which is named Global Solar Atlas. We checked this website before, the website is given here in the bottom. Uh, Global Solar Atlas has been prepared by Solar GIS under a contract to the World Bank based on the solar resource database that it own and uh, maintain. There are different types of maps available here actually. Uh, for example, this is the world map of global horizontal irradiation. You may have a specific maps for the countries. For example, this is the direct normal irradiation, global horizontal irradiation in the middle and photovoltaic power potential in Iraq. Also, you may enter the specific data, location data. Uh, we we tried this before, you may remember. For example, you may put here the name of the city or latitude longitude, then it uh, shows on the map and you may have different parameters for that location. For example, I tell here Baghdad and you may have here the specific photovoltaic power output, direct DNI, GHI, DIF, GTI or uh, uh, radiation on a tilted surface which is at optimum tilt angle, the optimum tilt angle at this location and the optimum orientation and the average air temperature. Uh, this uh, is a very very important website. The um, next solar data resource is a commercial software named Meteonorm. It is also a very well-known software. Meteonorm software is a worldwide worldwide uh, irradiation data and uh, it is also a well-known uh, data resource among scientists. Uh, Solcast is another solar data resource as you can see it is a solar uh, irradiation data it is again a commercial data source and you should pay for it you can see the pricing here at this website. PVGIS is a free uh, solar radiation data source. Um, it may not be accepted for some, uh, some accurate calculation or bankable project. If you bankable means that you should prepare the project data to be uh, acceptable for a bank. But uh, for many, uh, many daily uh, calculations, uh, it is a very good resource uh, and you may refer to that. Solemi is another solar data, data uh, resource uh, by DLR, Institute of Engineering Thermodynamics, and uh, there are a lot of data in Solemi. You may find them in the website, which is given in bottom of the page. Uh, an interesting solar data resource is Solar Anywhere. The name is also interesting. Solar Anywhere is a solar uh, resource uh, data set for many location and um, this is also uh, and you can see that uh, the word here you can see that this is a bankable solar radiance data again if you want to use the full capabilities you should purchase the data resource and these uh, um, these orange or i don't know red uh, colors are the locations where the data are available from solar anywhere. Uh, another source of data is the, the solar design softwares. There are two very important and the main solar design software, solar photovoltaic design softwares, PV Syst and PV Sol. We will discuss about them later and I will show you the screens and how to design the system by these two softwares. But uh, just um, to tell you about the, the data import, weather, weather data import, you can see here, I showed it here, that it is possible, for example, to use in these softwares different databases, for example, from NASA, which I will show you later, 
and metro norm so if you buy this software for example generally they include the metro norm software also and there is no need to buy it if you want just to use radiation data uh, IRENA International Renewable Energy Agency also has a global atlas which is important actually they have the atlas for different renewable energies and it's worth seeing it I advise you to have a look at them. Uh, NASA, NASA has a data source from maybe uh, some decades back and um, uh, you may find more information at their website shown here uh, there are a lot of solar radiation database available in their uh, website. Uh, this is a sample uh, of the database uh, from NASA, for example, uh, uh, in different cities of Iraq. You can see here the cities, for example, in Najaf. This is the latitude, longitude. These are the, the, uh, the GHSR or uh, Global Horizontal uh, radiation, solar radiation based on megajoule per square meter per day. These are the monthly average, daily values, and this at the last column is the annual average. For example, in Kirkuk, in the month of July, the average uh, daily solar radiation, monthly average daily so by monthly average daily solar radiation, I mean the average solar radiation for the month of July but please note that this is only for one day not for the whole month okay this is for only for month one day so for example in Kirkuk in the month of July based on NASA data 27.9 uh, approximately megajoule per square meter uh, solar radiation you have per day from sunrise to sunset okay uh, the next uh, source of data actually is taking the data from scientific papers there are a lot of scientific papers on solar radiations there is the they may give the data from satellite data from uh, solar uh, softwares from simulations or modeling and the others for example, this is a very old paper which is about solar radiation map for Iraq. It's written by Ahmad, Hamdani, and Ibrahim. It seems that there was a solar energy research center at that time, uh, 1983, in Baghdad. I don't know if it is uh, still working or not, but uh, they prepared different maps um, for different parts of Iraq. This is the annual insulation iso radiation lines actually by iso radiation i mean they mean the lines that the radiation is the same on these lines uh, there are different maps available in this paper you may refer to the paper if you want to know more about that this is another paper for example uh, uh, with the topic a comparative study of available measures global solar radiation in iraq again you can see here the cities and you can see here the months Again, you should check from where the data is given. It may be from Iraq Meteorological Station, it may be from NASA data, it may be from ground measurements or others. This is another uh, paper. Uh, this is another paper which gives the solar radiation in, for example, some cities in Iraq. This is the Sunshine Hour. We will discuss about it. By Sunshine Hour, it is not from sunrise to sunset okay for example in july in baghdad okay you can see that the average sunshine hour is 12.3 per day it does not mean that the time the time from sunrise to sunset is 12.3 hours it shows the times or hours within a day in july in baghdad that you have sunshine uh, the day length for this specific day in Baghdad may be, for example, 14 hours, okay? From these 14 hours, you have 12.3 sunshine hours. The same, uh, the, uh, the same for, for example, December is much less. You can see it is 6.3. Again, in this specific day, it does not mean that the day length is uh, 6.3. Actually, day length is different from the sunshine hour. Okay, day length is from sunrise to sunset. Sunshine hour is the hours within a day that you have bright sunshine. Or uh, actually, uh, uh, solar radiation irradiance above 200 uh, 
what per square meter or so. We'll discuss about it later. Okay, for example, uh, this is uh, taken from I Iraq Metrological Station. So you can see that there's a paper, this paper, which is given by Han Hanadani, uh, and it shows the day solar radiation data in different parts of Iraq, and it is taken from Iraq Metrological Station. So instead of going to the Iraq Metro Metrological Station, you may refer to this paper to find the solar radiation in Baghdad based on measured data, okay? The other solar radiation re data resource is data from textbooks. There are a lot of textbooks about solar energy, like the one we have in this course. For example, in our textbook, there is an appendix, appendix D. In appendix D, there are metrological data for some of the cities in the world. For example, this is in the African continent. The country is Egypt, the city is Cairo. Here for Cairo, you can see the H bar. H bar is the, as you can see here, the data. H bar is the monthly average daily radiation on a horizontal surface. The unit is megajoule per square meter. And for example, for the month of July in Cairo, okay, the monthly average daily solar irradiation is 27.1 megajoule per square meter. Uh, there are some uh, some websites. Uh, if the websites are trusted websites, then you may use them for collecting solar radiation for different cities. Uh, one important, uh, and I think it's a very good resource, is Solar Electricity Handbook. Uh, this handbook has a website, and in that website, you can see the link here. You may uh, you may. Uh, have the solar radiation data for different cities. Let me show you uh, how it works. For example, this is the website of Solar Electricity Handbook. In the solar irradiance part, you can see here that you can select the country. As an example, you may select here each country. For example, it may be Iraq. And when you select the country, then you should select the city. You can see that here there are uh, different cities where you can find, for example, if you check Mosul, then uh, you can see here that you should select the panel direction. It may be directly south, southwest, uh, and different direction. We will select the uh, we will select the directly facing south, and then here you can see the average solar ir insulation. Insulation is the same as irradiation or energy. Uh, Mosul average uh, solar insulation figures and they are on, uh, based on kilowatt hour per square meter per day on a horizontal surface. For example, now we are in the month of July and you can see that on, in July, uh, the monthly average daily solar irradiation on a horizontal surface in Mosul is 7.31 kilowatt hour per square meter per day. You may select also other orientation, other slopes, and we will discuss about them uh, later. Okay. Uh, as an example, I checked, I, I I compared here the data from the appendix of our textbook, which was this, and the data from Solar Electricity Handbook software. Here we have the solar irradiation for Cairo. For example, in the month of June, you can see here that it is 27.95 from our textbook. And from the website, you may see that it is, for example, 7.65 in the month of June. Or in July, for example, it is 27.1 and 7.3. Uh, you may be surprised why the figures are different. For example, for the month of July, it is 27.1, while here in the month of July, it is 7.3. Why are the results, why the results are different? Can you guess? You may pause the video and think about that. Why the figures are different from the appendix in the book and solar electricity handbook software for the Cairo. Okay, I hope you paused the video and thought about that and uh, the answer is because the units are different. As you may remember, the unit in the book is megajoule per square meter and the unit in the solar electricity handbook 
as written here is kilowatt hour per square meter and these are not the same actually so in order to compare them you should convert one to another that is the conversion factor the conversion factor i read and here i've written here i one kilowatt per square meter is 3.6 measure joule per square meter so if you multiply for example this by 3.6 then you can see that the numbers are approximately the same okay these were the solar radiation resources and coming to the third part it is the solar radiation modeling actually solar radiation model is an important um, topic in solar engineering uh, you may also you may even select your master thesis about solar radiation modeling there are a lot of topics which you may work on them for your uh, final thesis master thesis about solar radiation models actually it is still an open problem and may be worked a lot of work has been done before but the way is also open for more works especially for the locations where there were no models available uh, solar radiation models can be classified as you can see into different categories based on the type of model which may be linear or non-linear uh, based on the number of input parameters from one to more and based on the type of input which may be different meteorological or non-meteorological parameters for example it may be sunshine duration temperature relative humidity latitude altitude cloud cover transmittance and pressure we will discuss about them later and you may refer, you may see this paper for more information about solar radiation models Today we want to talk about a clear sky model. This is the first model which we are introducing. Actually, even on a clear day, all the extraterrestrial irradiance does not reach the ground. Why? Because part of it may be absorbed or scattered by the molecules in the air as I discussed before, uh, as I explained before, because it is not only clothes that uh, change the characteristic of solar radiation the aerosol dusts molecules in the air also can affect it so by clear sky model i mean the uh, a, a, a sky like the picture in the background as you can see here where there is no clouds but there may be other molecules or uh, particles available in the world. Generally at noon on a clear day about 25% of the extraterrestrial radiation from the sun is scattered and absorbed as it passes through the atmosphere so 75% will reach us on a clear day at noon. In the morning and in the evening the attenuation from the atmospheric in atmosphere increases due to the longer path through the atmosphere when the you may remember the air mass definition when the path of the sun is increased uh, because it is an angle to the earth uh, it passes more distance through the atmosphere so the absorption as a scattering effect will be more so this is the first model it works in a clear day clear day means a day without clothes this is the summary of the formula for the clear sky model as you can see gc which stands for clear sky total irradiance on earth on earth means that on the earth surface it means that considering the effect of atmosphere actually we are going one step forward up to no we just discussed about the models or formulas that can calculate the solar radiation at the top edge of the atmosphere from now on and in the next week we are discussing about the formulas or models which, a which able you, enable you to calculate the solar radiation on the earth okay the total solar radiation on the earth is uh, the sum of clear sky beam irradiance plus clear sky diffuse irradiance this is the beam irradiance and this is the uh, the diffuse irradiance please note that this is on the horizontal on the horizontal surface i forgot to write it here but please remember in your mind that this formula is only for the horizontal surface if the surface is not horizontal and has a, a slope then there will be another parameter here and we'll discuss it next week maybe okay 
How we calculate GCB and GCD? There are two formulas for the clear sky beam radiation and clear sky diffuse radiation, as you can see here. It is um, GON multiplied by tau B multiplied by cosine of theta Z. GON in this formula, as you may remember from previous lessons, is irradiance on a surface normal to the sun rays. GON, a surface uh, normal to the sun rays outside the atmosphere, okay? And uh, so I should write here extraterrestrial. It may be better to write, you may correct it or remember that GON is the extraterrestrial irradiance on a surface normal to the sun rays. And if you multiply it by multiply it by cosine of theta z, theta z was the zenith angle, then you may remember that the result will be extraterrestrial irradiance again, but on a horizontal surface. So the difference between GON and GON multiplied by cosine of theta z is that the product will show you the extraterrestrial irradiance on the horizontal surface. The same here. And if you multiply the extraterrestrial irradiance on a horizontal surface by a factor which enable you to calculate the beam irradiance, then the result will be the clear sky beam irradiance. And if you multiply the same product here by tau d, which is a factor for a correction factor actually for the diffuse irradiance, then you will have the clear sky diffuse radiance irradiance and then you may sum them up to find the total irradiation. Beam and diffuse coefficient tau b and tau d as shown here in above equations are used to apply the effect of atmosphere. How you can calculate different parameters? G, O, N, and cosine theta z, as you may remember, in both formula can be calculated as shown below. These are not new formulas. We discussed about them before. For example, G, O, N may be calculated from 1, 4, 1, A, and cosine of theta z, both in this and this formula, may be calculated from equation 1, 6, 5. What about tau d and tau b? For tau b, or beam coefficient, correction coefficient, there is a formula, as you can see here, it is the summation of some parameters, a0, a1, k, theta z is known, a0, a1, and k can be calculated as shown here, they, for example, a0 is a multiplicated cross product of r0, r0 star, how these parameters can be calculated, the parameters and the first column here actually r0 r1 and rk can be calculated from table 281 this is a table from your textbook you can see that the value depends on the climate type it's based on the climate which may be tropical mid-latitude summer subarctic summer or mid-latitude winter you may find the value for the coefficient how you can uh, ca uh, you can uh, consider the uh, you can see, uh, guess, or find uh, what, uh, into what line actually your location dependent. It depends on the characteristic, on meteorological characteristic. Here, I wrote some of the meteorological characteristics, which enables you to find the right row for your location. Uh, for Iraq, actually, it can be divided into three distinct climatic zones using a climate classification system. The first is coastal area, for example, near Basra to the Syrian desert. Uh, these are subtropical. The wetter areas in, of winter, for example, highland areas north of Baghdad, they are subtropical precipitation. And the cooler and wetter climate, similar to the Mediterranean, northern mountain areas these are subtropical so based on the location you may find the correct uh, row in this table actually the difference is not so much as you can see here and if there is a small mistake it may not be so important and what about the third column here these can be calculated from these three formulas in these formulas a is the elevation uh, or altitude of the location in kilometer. For example, if you are uh, if you are calculating tau b for a specific uh, location, for example, for Karbala, then you should uh, find what is the elevation of Karbala above sea level and uh, convert it to kilometer. 
then put it here as a and then you may calculate a0 star a1 star and k star putting all together here you can find a0 a1 and k and then putting in this formula you can find tau b and as you remember multiplying by these two you may find clear sky beam radiation what about tau d or diffuse irradiation when tau b or beam factor is calculated just simply put it in this formula equation 285 and you can find tau d substituting in the previous formula you may find the clear sky diffuse irradiation irradiance on earth on a horizontal surface so you will have tau b you you have tau d you have tau b uh, so you are able to calculate the clear sky diffuse and clear sky beam ra irradiance uh, now you have both of them just add them g clear sky is g clear sky beam plus g clear sky diffuse which is the total radiation on a horizontal surface on the earth with the assumption of clear sky okay the same can be done for the hourly uh, terrestrial beam and diffuse solar irradiation you can find the hourly terrestrial or on the earth beam and diffuse solar irradiation based on clear sky model these are also uh, important formulas and we will use them later the uh, reason there, there are two examples actually in your textbook these are very very important examples i ask you to read them very carefully they explain in detail the philosophy of the clear sky model and how they are applied for a, a specific example uh, later i'll give you a homework which is the same as the examples which are shown here okay let's summarize what we talked about today we learned how to find the terrestrial irradiance irradiation on a horizontal surface at any location with clear sky assumption in the next lessons we will see how to calculate terrestrial irradiance and irradiation on a horizontal surface without the clearest bias limitation so it seems that the next session will be more interesting and exciting i hope so this is the end of lesson six and see you in the next lesson maybe next week thank you and take care